So the brand new Fennec is finally here and people have been calling it the Vector. This is a reincarnation of the Vector from Modern Warfare 2 if you guys didn't know. And you do get to unlock this at tier 15 from the battle pass of season four. So basically today I'm going to be helping you guys get to know this weapon. We're going to cover some basic stats, some recoil patterns to help you figure out how to control the recoil on this thing, as well as the best class setup that I do recommend that you guys should use in order to make it feel as balanced as possible. All right, before we get into the video today, I want to have a like goal of 500 likes. If we could hit 500 likes, I'd really appreciate it. And if you're new around here, make sure to subscribe. If you're part of this demographic right here, you watch my videos, but you just haven't subscribe yet what are you doing man make it official join turbo nation today subscribe all right so the first thing that i need to point out about this weapon is that it has an insanely high fire rate it's so high that that recoil is almost going to be really difficult to control so you definitely need some specific attachments to be able to control it perfectly especially from long distance now the other downside to this is that you only have 25 rounds in the base ammo capacity however there is a 40 round extended magazine that reload speed is not impressive at all it's at 2.9 seconds and you can imagine with only 25 rounds in every magazine how often that you will actually need to be reloading your weapon so you might want to consider using sleight of hand at that point and the aim down sight speed is about 196 milliseconds all right so now let's talk about the damage profiles of the fennec because i'm sure that's what a lot of people want to know is the fennec actually good and worth the grind so anything under 10 meters you're gonna get a three shot kill to the head and a four shot kill to the body all right moving on and from that 10 to about 18 meter range you're gonna get a four shot kill to the head so it increased by one shot and a five shot kill to the body all right and there's a really small pocket here where the damage does drop off from that 18 to 21 meter range it's still a four shot kill to the head but it becomes a six shot kill to the body anything over that 21 meter range it's going to be a five shot kill to the head seven shot kill to the body now the one thing that i wanted you to take note of here is that it has a very similar stat line to the m13 where the m13 has a really high fire rate it has amazing time to kill for the headshots as well as amazing from long Long range so pretty much anything over 30 meters if you're going to compare the fennec to the mp5 the fennec is going to win as far as time to kill goes because it has a time to kill of 218 milliseconds to the head and a 327 millisecond time to kill to the body so clearly the fennec is going to win at long range so long story short the fennec absolutely dominates thanks to its really high fire rate now it is a really close call between the mp5 and the fennec if you're talking about up close anything underneath 10 meters however the fennec absolutely dominates the mp5 from 10 meters and beyond but the main weakness of the fennec that's holding it back in my opinion is the fact that it only has 40 rounds for its extended magazine as well as the really slow reload times so in order to kit this weapon to be as optimized as possible so it has a perfect balance with recoil control from long distance as well as the enough ammo that you need you will have to sacrifice one of those essential attachments just so that you can use sleight of hand on it and me personally i feel like it's not worth it because the gun is just not going to perform as good as i feel like it should all right so here's going to be the fun part we are going to be testing out the recoil patterns of what this gun would be like without the recommended attachments versus the attachments that i do recommend because like i said earlier the fire rate is so high that you are going to have a hard time controlling that recoil so recoil control is going to be priority on this class setup and that's why we are going to show you here proof of which attachments actually matter so uh first thing i'm gonna do is i am going to let the gun do its thing i'm going to show you guys its recoil pattern and i'm not going to try to counteract that recoil at all all right so here we go all right now taking a quick look at that as you can see it has a little weird shape to it almost like a stretched out s that bullet pattern i'm not happy with that you know we got to make that better now the second part of this test is that we're still going to be using the base weapon without the attachments that i do recommend and we're going to just try to actually control that recoil so let's go ahead and do that all right so as you can see that was actually really hard for me to do uh it even came to a point where now it's combined with the original uh recoil pattern uh oh battery low it's not that consistent here with the bullet pattern now as you can see it's a little separated here so that's not good so the second portion of the test is i am going to be using the recommended attachments to control the recoil so that's going to be the ranger foregrip and the deadfall barrel 
I'll show you guys some screenshots as a reference to show you guys, you know, how I was able to pick these out. All right, so here we go again. We're going to go ahead and let the gun do its thing. I'm not going to control that recoil. All right, right off the bat, already you can tell that that bullet spread is a lot tighter. And obviously the bullet travel is less vertical here versus over here. As you can see, it's all the way up there, whereas this one's over here. So now let's go ahead and try to control that recoil. Oh my goodness. As you can see, this is a lot more centered. It's a lot more consistent as far as the bullets go within that diameter. The diameter is a lot tighter as well. And that is exactly what you want when you're going to be using the Fennec. You want that laser beam accuracy because you want to be able to challenge people confidently from medium to long range because that's where this gun shines the most. Really briefly, I just wanted to go over the different recoil patterns of the barrels and also the under barrels so we can compare and contrast and I can show you exactly how I picked these out. So obviously I did a wall test with all of these attachments here. Now, the main reason why I picked the deadfall is because it gives us the most amount of damage range as we possibly can. And also it has that sound suppression combination so of course obviously you want to stay stealthy you want to stay alive longer and having that part of your class setup is obviously a huge plus so uh, i know that the zlr saber also does have that sound suppression and damage range however it doesn't have that much damage range increase to it so we're also going to talk a little bit more in depth of that later on in the video when i do talk about the class setup but for now i just wanted to show you the different recoil patterns as well also take a look at the recoil pattern of the saber it's not that great up here man there's too much space here between the bullets here how can you deny the fact that the zlr deadfall barrel has sound suppression and damage range and recoil control you know you can't really ask for more than that all right so the last thing that i wanted to outline here was to show you guys how i came to the conclusion of using that ranger barrel so uh, if you take a look this is the base recoil pattern obviously it's green so green is base and uh merc foregrip is going to be this one right here commando foregrip here operator foregrip here and ranger foregrip here now just looking at it visually, to me, the clear choice is obviously going to be the Ranger foregrip. I mean, like, look at this bullet spread here. It's it's probably the most in-line bullet spread that we have here and most consistent for those first five or six shots, which I was talking about earlier, which are the most important. And if you take a look at over here, it's just way too broken up, way too broken up here, not consistent at all. And, you know, the operator foregrip, you know, I was actually back and forth with these two, but ultimately I felt like the ranger foregrip was the best. I mean, if you take a look at the operator foregrip here, there's one shot here, the next two shots are right here, but there's one shot here and everything else here connects. You know, I want consistency with my shots. I want to have that confidence when I'm going to a gunfight that my accuracy is going to be as 100% as possible. So uh, this is pretty much just how I came up with my conclusions here. And these are the results that you saw earlier. We just did a live test of this. All right, so finally, we are going to be talking about the best class setup for the Fennec. That will make it feel as balanced as possible, all right? So we're going to be going a little bit in depth with every single attachment and why I chose it. And yes, I actually did max it out, as you can see, level 54, so I'm not just BSing you guys about these attachments. I actually do use the weapon to an extent, and I'm actually still working on trying to get it platinum, but I wanted to get this video out as fast as possible. As you can see, all I still need is the splinter and the reptile camo, but anyways, I digress. All right, so for the barrel, we're using the deadfall barrel. Like I said earlier, this is going to give you the max amount of damage range possible. That recoil control, as we've seen already earlier in the video and as well as that sound suppression now the only negative to this class setup is that it's going to feel slow you just pre-aim around corners and try to assume there's always going to be an enemy and that aim down side speed and movement speed is not going to be that noticeable all right so for the next attachment so i don't know i don't know about you guys but i think the iron sights are just absolutely atrocious especially if you're trying to challenge people from long range you're just going to have a hard time seeing your opponent in general because of the iron sights if i were to suggest the sight it would definitely be the cronin lp 945 mini reflex all right so for the next attachment I'm going to go with the stippled grip tape. This is to help us at least mitigate some of those negatives as seen on the rest of the class setup for the negatives that you do see for the aim down sight speed. So this is definitely going to help us out, especially in close quarter combat situations where this gun actually shines the most to be able to help us bring our gun up a lot faster. Now for the ammunition, obviously you're going to want to run those 40 round drum mags. 
You would be a fool if you try to run with 25 round mags or even the 12 round mags. Yes, that damage and aim down sight speed and movement speed plus is nice and all that, but, but let's just think about it in the most practical way possible. Are you gonna be able to get your burst shots off before the enemy could actually kill you because you have to be extremely accurate with this gun. So that's something that you also must understand and why having 40 round drum mags is probably going to be your best bet. All right, so for the last attachment, just like we spoke of earlier, just like we discussed earlier and I showed you guys the proof, the Ranger foregrip is definitely gonna be the best choice for the underbarrel. Now here's an option if you want to, if you could play with the iron sights, you could take off the optic and I would strongly recommend putting on sleight of hand. Cause like I said earlier, you're gonna be reloading this weapon a lot because of that ammo count. It's not that high and the, and the fire rate is just way too high. So that's about it for the class setup. Some closing thoughts on this weapon is that you really have to be as stealthy as possible because if you are gonna try to challenge people from medium to long range, if they get that first shot on you, you are most likely gonna die, especially if you're gonna go up against the likes of the Grau or the M4. Those are the weapons in the game that are the most popular and the ones that you will most commonly go against in match. So you have to be as stealthy as possible. Try to flank a little bit, try to be sneaky, and always use maybe dead silence to silence your footsteps a little bit more. If you take those things into consideration, this gun will be an absolute melt machine especially like with those time to kills that we discussed earlier in the video you will have an awesome time and also try to close that gap between yourself and the enemy as much as you possibly can and always remember that this gun shines the most on small to medium sized maps if you guys did find this video helpful let me know by leaving a like on this video it'll show me that hey this is the kind of content you like to see and you want to continue to see it and make sure to subscribe if you are new around here. Join Turbo Nation today. Make it official, man. All right, and that's about it. And I hope you guys have a good day. Peace.